It's a little hot Tuesday, big race this Saturday. Breakfast with Bob. Pacho Man! We have a studio audience again. My name is Bob Ballard, Breakfast with Bob. We are brought to you by Hoka One on a Polar Halo Neuroscience. Velo Fix today's plan. Normatech. Our championship edition will be at Four Seasons Resort, Hualalai, and we're streaming on Triathlete Magazine. My guest, the three-time Ironman world champion, more important, mother to Izzy, <laughs> Miranda Carfrey. <laughs> yeah. I think you got that, uh, more importantly, mom to Izzy part ac quite accurate. Right, <laughs> yeah. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So this year, Izzy's having fun? Yeah, Izzy's having fun. Uh, last year when um, she was here, she was only about six weeks old. So, as I said, kind of just hanging out, not really doing a whole lot. But this year, a whole lot of personality. Uh, it's been really fun to bring her here. And I'm sure we'll be coming here for many years to come. So, um, and she'll get more and more fun as she gets older. So, you just come off a training camp in Kansas. Yeah. And so, you're, it's hot. It's windy. Yeah. And it's a lot like these type of con this type of conditions, right? What did you come away from that with? Yeah, well, you know, we um we wanted to do our last preparations down at sea level. Uh, the last, I guess, basically since 13 or 14, I've been doing my preparations up at altitude in Boulder, and they've gone great, and I've had great results here. Um, but way back when I first started, we would uh, train in LA, actually, with yes. Siri in Santa Monica. And Tim wanted to try sea level, and at this stage in our relationship with a baby, there's no splitting up. <laughs> we make decisions for the family. Yes. <laughs> and um, Julie's group, uh, Julie Dibbins's group, um, wanted to go down to sea level. And, and Kansas just made the most sense. We looked at Texas. We looked at Arizona. And Kansas was just easy because we could pack up uh, the van, pack up the truck. And um, our nanny actually drove it out to Kansas. It's only an eight-hour drive from, from Boulder. And uh, Tim and I and Izzy flew. Um, and it was great. Such a really cute small town. Um, Ten minute ride to get out to roads that are rolling, windy, and as you mentioned, hot, um, and no cars. And if there were any any cars, they were very considerate and um, passed us on the other side of the road. Unfortunately, right. Boulder's become so busy um, traffic wise. Nothing like San Diego, Scary. yeah, no, San Diego <laughs> or bad. California, yeah. but. Um, yeah, just and a lot of um, bikes that I think the motorists are less patient with the cyclists in, in Colorado now. So, yeah, we had a great time. I really enjoyed the training camp, but um, depending on how we race on the weekend, we'll determine whether we go back and do that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you came off of that, went to Augusta, right? Didn't, yeah. Did, do you have the fastest bike split there? I did, yeah. It's yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah it's we like that. I'm around. That's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This doesn't usually happen for me. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I... We had both had great races in Augusta, uh, both took the win there, so that was a really good indicator for the training that we did in Augusta, in mean, um, sorry, Kansas, and obviously a good indicator for Kona, but, you know, 70.3 is nothing like Ironman, and right. this is, Ironman is nothing like any other, so um, certainly a positive sign, but really doesn't mean anything. In terms of the focus on the bike this year, what have you been doing? I think the focus this year has been Izzy more than anything, yeah. and because of that, um, a lot more wind trainer rides, a lot more train trainer rides, a lot more time on the turbo, um, just so that I could, you know, get off and feed her between. Right. You know, initially it was I couldn't go out for five hours without my maybe my boobs exploding and her <laughs> exploding, so <laughs> I would ride the trainer, hop off, uh, feed Izzy, and then hop back on. Um, and yeah, um, through that, I'm been riding the best I've ever ridden in my career so uh, that's really exciting very um, exciting and hopefully um, it shows on the weekend it certainly showed and uh, has showed this year in all of my races I've been riding very well but um, again um, all that really matters is this race so when we look at uh, 2010 going into that race obviously overwhelming favorite with three wins in a row with Chrissy Wellington yeah this year we've got Daniela Reef with three wins in a row overwhelming favorite but stuff happens. Stuff happens. We, stuff yeah. happens all the time. So when you go into this race, what do you take away from 2010? Because the last thing you expected was Chrissy not starting that day, and that yeah. was the day you ended up winning your first Ironman World Championship title. Yeah, I mean, uh, 2010, I was I was completely shocked um, that morning when Chrissy didn't show up. Uh, I think Tim was there with me. He was supporting. He wasn't racing, and he said it was, when they announced it over the loudspeaker. He said it looked like I'd seen a ghost. I was white. I basically yeah. spent my whole year thinking about okay. How am I going to be Chrissy? Chrissy's going to be doing this. If Chrissy does this, this is what I'm going to do. And all of a sudden, she wasn't even there. 
So I felt, I felt an immense amount of pressure because all of a sudden everybody was like, well, if Chrissy's not here, you better win. <laughs> like, well, you have no excuse well, now. Well, I better Because you've been second. Yeah, I was second uh, the year before. And, you know, th- this was my second Ironman 2010. Yes. And nine was my first. So I had one under my belt and, um, you know, should be able to perform a little better in your second with a little experience. Um, and, yeah, so fortunately I had one of the best races. Uh, I think I swam with the front pack that day. I don't know. Wow. That was kind of an out-of-body experience. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, I had just a perfect day. Everything went s- very smoothly. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Daniela is in good health and uh, will be ready to race, so I won't be so lucky on Saturday. Um, but, again, you never know. You never know what's going to happen on race day. Um, maybe I have the race of my life. Maybe she doesn't have her best race. Uh, but again, she's not the only woman on that start line. No, that we <laughs> there's a I lot. I got to worry about. There's a lot of rookies coming in. Um, obviously, Lucy Charles is going to be even faster. She, you know, s- sort of un- untapped potential. And yeah, I, I mean, I just can't think about the other girls. There's too many of them. So I, I'll just try and focus, focus on myself. On yeah. <laughs> Don't waste any energy on anyone else. And um, hopefully, I can put together a great race. So speaking of great races, one of the greatest races we've ever seen here was 2014. You come off the bike, what, 1430 down? And at that point, when you run along 1430 down, you could be beating yourself up and say, oh, I've been on the podium every time. I've won this race. I've won this race a couple times. How hard is it with that person on one shoulder, person on the other shoulder, basically saying, you can do this. Ah, the condo's right there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I like uh, definitely had the negative and positives going that day. Uh, certainly early on the run, I felt very negative and um, felt like a failure because I was so far down and being defending champ, um, yeah, I kind of felt like I'd let my team down, let myself down. And then I sort of got my head right a couple of miles later and just figured, you know, I'm here, uh, I'm in good shape. Uh, I know I looked after myself well on the bike and just go and see if I can have my fastest marathon. And, and I did have my fastest marathon that day and that, um, got me the victory. So if, if anything that, that top mentally, that was my best race I've ever had here. Physically, it wasn't my best race. But um, why, why wasn't it physically? I, the 2013, I uh, you know there was more power output on the bike, and I think it was a hotter year, yeah. and I ran just maybe 10 seconds slower in 13. So I think 13 was physically my best year. But I think the mental battles are the ones you're proudest of. When things right. are going right, things are easy. Um, anyone can race well. When the you know when you're um, when you're having a bad day, things are going wrong. I think character really shines through if you can overcome and still perform. And so both of those years, um, if I could have a mental great year and a physical great year, I'm going to I'm gonna need those two things um, on Saturday. Well, and the person you passed was Danielle Arif yeah. towards the end of that race. And I'm sure she still thinks about that, that that's, <laughs> you know, if there's somebody out there, I got to f- see where Mirinda is. No, I think she probably she she's probably uh, I'm I'm a has been now Daniela. Don't worry about me. You've got um, <laughs> I'm just a mum. Uh, just got little Izzy. That's all I care about. Um, no, she's she's got a lot of other women. I think she's she's looking at. But um, yeah, I mean, I I hope to be up there. But uh, we'll wait and see. How hard was it to come back from having a baby? You know, initially it was really hard coming back. Um, just time, time wise. Yeah. Um, and Izzy needs me need you she needs you all the time and uh, that was really tough to just find the time to to get out the door or you know get a session in and then feeling guilty that I'm going back to work um, you know every time I walk out the door she would cry and that was Ugh. heartbreaking every single time and if nothing else I'm gonna kill myself out there on the weekend because of every single time she broke my heart when I had to walk <laughs> out the door and she wanted mummy um, so yeah uh, yeah tough in that respect but um, Physically, the first uh, probably four months were really tough. Just um, you're carrying a little extra weight. Your body's not really the same as it was before. Things are a little bit looser. Um, things jiggle now uh, when you're running. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't jiggle before. Uh, so it just doesn't feel um, as good. And then, um, yeah, I, I think around four months, things started to come together. I started to get glimpses of my old self. And once you start seeing that, then it sort of... I don't know, we're here. 
and I right. think I'm in pretty good shape. So, <laughs> so the other side of, of having a little one is when you come home from a workout and you're feeling like oh, I didn't have a good workout. She doesn't care. No. She's just your mom and she just wants to play. Exactly. Yeah, that's um, probably one of the things that's been fantastic about having Izzy around. Like, I don't dwell on a bad session. Um, I go to work. I train hard. I do my very best. And then I come home and play with Izzy and um, forget about it and go back to training the next day and do the same thing. And so I think I you know, haven't wasted any energy worrying about if I you know, I didn't hit a key session here or um, anything like that. So... Yeah, I mean, the one thing that actually has suffered a little bit is recovery because uh, Izzy's quite active and, yeah, when mummy comes home and daddy comes home, it's time to play and that means chasing her around or carrying her around and um, no feed up, relax time anymore. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. is fine. I mean, I I still feel like I'm performing well, so, um, but are. we'll see on Saturday. <laughs> You've never been off the podium here. Yeah. Uh, is, is that the goal, podium or? Yeah, I mean, I would obviously... <laughs> I don't really know how I'm going to race on, on Saturday because I've, I'm a little bit removed from the scene, having had a year off and right. there's new talent come through. Um, on my best day, I think I can, I can be up there with the, the best of anyone. Um, so, yeah, I, th I think a podium is, is definitely a potential. Um, yeah, that's, that's my goal. You know, one other quickie. After you won in 2010... And then in 2011, you had that really good battle mm -hmm. with Chrissy Wellington. Yeah. But I know you came out of that race going, okay, you know what? I, I lost by a couple minutes, but I'll get her next time. Yeah. And then she retires. Yeah. Was that hard for you? Because it's like I've talked to a lot of the guys who are bummed that Jan Ferdano's not racing. Yeah. They want, this is the place where the best come to race and you want to race the best in the world. Yeah. Was that hard for you to get motivated again when she retired? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 2012, I had my worst results here in Kona. I got third. And um, Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I didn't have a great, I ran very slow that day. But yeah, having um, Chrissy there really motivated me every day to get out and train. And then when she wasn't there... Um, yeah, it was kind of harder to motivate. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, all the good girls are here <laughs> this weekend. Yes, so not hard to get motivated this year. <laughs> motivation is high, and, uh, yeah, I get to race all the best. But um, And, and yeah. what's it about this place? Because you've always been on the podium. You've won three times. You The first time out, you got second place. What is it about this place and you that goes so well together? Yeah, I think um, I, just, I just love racing here. I love the atmosphere. I love... Um, the opportunity that you have um, to race against the best in the world on this super hard course. Um, I feel grateful to be able to come here and, and showcase my talents um, and be recognized for it, for that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I also, I grew up in Australia and Brisbane and all of that. So it sort of helps that I, you know, grew up in a hotter climate. I think that sort of allows me to race well in the heat, but um, yeah, more than that, I just really respect the island, the, the the athletes that have gone before me and um i think that that is kind of one of one of many reasons why i've been able to race well here and you're loving doing the tv show the tim and rinnie and izzy show yeah the tim rinnie and izzy show it's kind of turning more like the, just the izzy show um yeah we've been really enjoying doing the youtube channel if anyone wants to check us out we're on youtube the tim and rinnie show and yeah we've been We've had Talbot, our film guy, basically follow us around all year and get footage. And um, it's kind of cool for us. We can look back on earlier videos. Family and movies. See, yeah, family movies that um, Talbot's putting together for us. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we just wanted to represent our sponsors and find ways to keep promoting them um, organically um, and by telling our story and show, showing how we go by day to day, which is basically the same as everyone else. Um, that can showcase our sponsors and hopefully they appreciate that love it how about a round of applause for three-time ironman world champion marinda carfrey poncho man bring us out it's a tuesday big races on saturday what?